Hey friends, it's Allie here from Fit for Fatima. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how to food prep for 2B mindset. So this is a food prep for beginners video and I'm gonna start off with just letting you know the order in which I do things, especially with the whole food plant-based diet. So first off, in 2B mindset, one of the proteins that is obviously encouraged for the whole food plant-based or vegan lifestyle is tofu. So I've opened up my firm tofu, I've drained it, and now I'm pressing it. So it's just between some kitchen towels and then I've placed some heavy items on it, some canned garbanzo beans, which of course we'll use in this um, meal prep, and some applesauce pouches from my kiddos. Then I purchased pre-cut, pre-cleaned broccoli and green beans. I have those on two pans here. I put a little bit of cooking spray and then my secret shaker mix. So my secret shaker mix, I just bought this like shaker at TJ Maxx, maybe Marshall's, I don't remember, for a couple bucks. I put garlic powder, black pepper, and onion powder in here, and then I just shake that over all my vegetables. Instead of bringing out three canisters each time and just like being crazy, I just have one mixture in here and I give it a little shake. I'm gonna put these in my oven at 375 for about 20 minutes or until they get yummy and crispy looking because that's the way I like my vegetables. In the meantime, I have some brown rice cooking on the stove top and I'm doing a couple cups of that because I'll do food prep for my husband and I for the week. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start dicing up some vegetables. So I have tons of bell peppers because they're delicious and sweet. I'll slice those up like how you would have them for fajitas and those will be a delicious treat along with some grilled onions. Remember, vegetables first guys. I don't know. When I started my journey to being fit about a year and a half ago, I realized that I didn't really know how to do food prep or how to even really cook when it came down to it. So I've had to learn some skill sets and one of those skill sets that I'm going to share with you today is how to cut a bell pepper. So. These have already been washed and cleaned. I cut off the cap of the bell pepper. Most people then would toss this. Don't toss it, that's a waste. I pop out the center or pop off the sides, throw just the little stem. No reason to waste all the rest of this bell peppery goodness. And then I'll slice up this as well and you can enjoy that. Now you'll notice that on this part of the cap there's still some seeds. Go ahead and flake those off into your scrap bowl or you could keep those, dry them, and plant them later to grow your own bell peppers. Now, there's the inside of the bell pepper. There's a lot of different ways that you can clean the inside of the bell pepper. Guys, I'm just gonna be real with you. I'm all about that quick way. I put my hand in, give it a twist, and pull out the insides. I'll tap the bell pepper to get the extra seeds. And then you can see there's still like some of that rind in there. So, I'm gonna cut my bell pepper down the sides and then if there's anything big, I'll just pick it off and throw it in my bowl here. Okay, easy peasy pumpkin squeezy. Now, I use the waxy side down. It's easier to cut a bell pepper if you chop from the inside of it. See how quickly that slices? Now, see how I really have to put, you have to get through the wax. So cut from the inside, okay? Don't cut from the outside like the shiny part cut from the inside of the bell pepper and it'll be easy slicing. The other thing is, is that a good knife is gonna be really important, but you also just wanna be really careful that you're um, paying attention when you're dicing, when you're cutting, when you're using your sharp knives, because you don't wanna hurt yourself. So just be really careful. Now, one thing that I do in my food prep life is I have like a million bowls, you guys. I just seriously keep bowls everywhere all the time. So. I will have all of my, um, I'll have all of my vegetables ready to go in different bowls as I'm prepping so that I can easily cook or roast or saute or whatever it is the next item because really like my stove doesn't have enough space to handle all the stuff that I'm doing. So definitely have those food prep bowls um, on your counter so that you can have an easier time just like having everything prepared. Now, the other thing that I wanna say is that the way that I do food prep when I'm doing a program where I have to 
um, like portion control and count my calories and do all that is I put everything in big bowls, I put it out on the counter, and then um, I will portion it out into food prep containers. But with 2B Mindset, that's not how we have to like do the program. We basically are able to eat the quantities that we want, and um, really it's not about measuring um, or weighing our food. So I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different this time. If you want to check my videos out for 21 day obsession and um, 80 day or 21 day fix and 80 day obsession, I have some food prep videos there that you can see how I do food prep when it comes to portion control. But since 80 day, since to be mindset isn't about that, then you'll see that I'm doing things a little bit differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to store these things in um, like larger canisters and bowls that have like Tupperware tops and whatnot so that um, I can portion out my food at each meal um, and really just see what I'm like, what I'm craving, what I'm feeling, how much food I need based on my to be mindset tracker. So you'll see here in the tracker, right? They have each meal and it basically just breaks down how much of everything it should take up on our plate. And the plating video is gonna be really important for you guys to watch and check out. So make sure that you're doing that. Now, if you're watching this video and you have not yet purchased To Be Mindset and you haven't gotten on board um, with that, but you're interested, let me know, I can tell you about it. The key to this program really is the accountability and the group. So um, let me know if you need some accountability with that. Now, you may have noticed that I just cut off the tip of my bell pepper. There's just some like blackening and stuff that doesn't look appealing to me that I don't think we could wash off. So I just cut that off, but I don't waste the bell pepper. Like the rest of it's just fine. So um, just be cognizant when you're cutting up your vegetables, how things look and how they're supposed to look. Make sure that everything is yummy and delicious so that we can stay healthy and fit. Cause that's really what we're aiming for, right? Um, now, the other thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about when it comes to our vegetables um, because vegetables first guys, vegetables first, right? That's the first thing that we want to be consuming when we're eating because they're going to fill us up and they're going to be just really the most healthy item for us. So if you can buy pre cleaned and pre cut items, do it right. Like you're getting into a new mindset, a new lifestyle, um, do whatever is going to be like the easiest and the best for you and your family or you and your circumstances. So, um, some things I buy already made. Like one example is this sweet kale salad. So I'm gonna use this deliciousness, you guys, seriously, like the ingredients are broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, kale, like it's great. But then there's some packages in here and the package has like salad dressing and other stuff that I don't want. So um, you could use it with this program, but it's just not something that I desire. So I'm gonna make my own salad dressing um, or I'm gonna use, what is that brand that I buy? Hold on. Walden Farms, I like Walden Farms dressings. They have them at like Sprouts, Whole Foods, you name it. Anyways, you guys, it's calorie free, sugar free, fat free, carb free, gluten free, cholesterol free. You know what it's not free? Taste, they're delicious. Go get some of these. I seriously have like all of the flavors. Um, so definitely buy things that you can like pre-prepared, pre-cooked, pre-cleaned, whatever it is. Um, for example, like Brussels sprouts, I'm sorry, Brussels sprouts are such a pain to sliver. Like I have definitely cut myself trying to like mandolin stupid Brussels sprouts. So um, now I just use the knife, but um, you can buy them like already shaved down and like delicious. So do that if you can, like make it as easy as possible. So. Um, the next thing I'm going to prepare after these bell peppers are my Brussels sprouts and I'll show you how I do that. Um, I like to sliver them down, you know, just kind of like cut each Brussels sprout into like three or four pieces. And then I put them in my air fryer oh, right there. Um, and I just kind of roast them up in my air fryer and they become like crispy, delicious awesomeness. So, um, I just buy the the bag of Brussels sprouts and I'll, you know, why don't I pop one open right now instead of like pausing this video and then coming back. So I'll take a Brussels sprout, right? Like here's the Brussels sprout and I will cut it up into like three pieces. So you see how they're just like little, they're delicious when you put them in the air fryer or 
You could roast them in the oven with a little bit of like cooking spray and like my secret shaker seasoning that I mentioned earlier in this video. And you could put that in the oven for probably like 35 minutes. I like them to be kind of crispy, almost like blackened a little bit. You guys, they're the bomb. It's so delicious. I seriously want to eat them for breakfast every day. Like if I don't have Brussels sprouts for breakfast, I'm a little bit, a little bit sad face. So I'm going to finish cutting up all of these bell peppers, you guys. I okay. So now for the Brussels sprouts, I have cut some Brussels sprouts and you'll notice that I just like, not like major craziness here. I keep grabbing ends. I want to show you guys like a middle section. See? So I just take the Brussels sprout, I cut it into three or four pieces, sliver it. I'm just gonna give it a quick spray with some cooking spray. And then you guys, seriously, the seasoning is life. Okay, so then I have my air fryer here. This is the basket of the air fryer. I have a couple of tutorials on how to use the air fryer on my YouTube channel. So you're welcome to go check those out. But I don't feel it too, Full. like you can see like there's the bottom of the air fryer because I want the air to get all around this <laughs> and like to get super crispy and I'm just going to turn on power I'm going to put it at 400 for like 10 minutes and then I'll check it um, at five minutes give it a shake to make sure that everything is like equally distributed in there getting all the goodness and then after that I will let it cook the rest of the time and then just keep this process going all right let's see what those look like when they come out the next thing I'm gonna start preparing is fried rice. Let me tell you about this. Okay, I buy riced cauliflower. Okay, you guys have probably seen this before. You've probably used it before. Let me tell you, this is all my rice. Okay, so I will take some riced cauliflower and some mushrooms. And I'm not gonna lift them. Okay, I'll lift up the carrots. Fine. I'm some carrots. Not that many. Let's just calm down. And I'll cook that all together with a little bit. Sorry, timer's going off. Priorities, people. Um, I'll cook the rice, cauliflower, some mushrooms, some carrots, some onions. All the timers are going off. Um, I'll saute them with a little bit of liquid aminos and have a delicious um, fried rice. Now, if you're not a vegan, you could add. A little bit of egg to it some scrambled egg that would be delicious a delicious dish um you could add some tofu to it if you want and i'll tell you what i like to add to it edamame so i just buy frozen edamame and i pop it in the microwave with a little bit of water for about five minutes you guys it's delicious throw it in with that uh fried rice combo that i got going on there and it's epic um my husband likes to throw a little sriracha on it because he lives a spicy life you know, after having two kids, like the second, my second child, um, Manny, I don't know what he did. I think he just took away all my ability to eat anything spicy. Does anybody else have that problem? I don't even know. So I have now successfully cut all of my Brussels sprouts. The other Brussels sprouts have beeped. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You see what I'm talking about? Like this crispiness, you guys, like seriously, Can we, that's not a really crispy one. Oh, that one's so crispy. It kind of fell apart. Do you see? That's so yummy looking. Okay, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. Now, I told you I'm all about the, the prep bowls, right? So I just keep prep bowls here throughout my entire process, right? Like, I have my Brussels sprouts ready to cook. I have the ones that have been cooked, and I just like am bowling everything the entire time so it's easiest at the end. All right, next, I'm going to dice up some mushrooms for my fried rice. Ooh, cauliflower fried rice. Okay, I'm in a super awkward squatting position, but I want to show you guys how I'm going to cut the mushrooms for my rice to cauliflower, um, fried rice cauliflower. Okay, so I just dice them first. Okay, right? So it's just like, a, it looks like a normal mushroom you'd get like at a restaurant or if you buy them like pre-cut, okay? So I just dice them like that and then I keep it together and then I dice it like maybe twice or three times going that way and then I cut it this way too. So they almost end up like little cucumber bits right um and this is just going to be like it'll just remind me more of a fried rice texture um to um for the mushroom okay lovelies let's talk about onions so to get an onion diced up just quick and easy for um my fried rice um and my cauliflower and fried rice. I just cut the onion in half. I cut off both ends like I just did. Cut the onion in half and then I just peel off that top layer of skin. 
okay? Now, I make little dices in the onion going that way, see? Okay, then I put it back down and then I cut going the opposite way which will give me little tiny beautiful onion dices which will be delicious in my cauliflower rice. Okay, seriously, thank goodness I was on the phone with my girlfriend this morning complaining about cutting carrots because she was like, why do you cut it like that? Okay, this is how I cut my cucumbers, but this is not how I've been cutting my carrots. I do not know what is wrong with me. Okay, I cut off the tip. Then, cut it into fours, but don't let it disconnect, right? So like, see how it's like four, right? I cut it once that way, then rotated 90, cut again, okay. Then you've got the four pieces. Then you're able to just make little, kind of hold it together and it'll cut them down. Now, if you want to be fancy like my girlfriend, I will not do this because I'm just a chicken and afraid of the knife. You just put the tip down and you just bend the knife or you just move the knife back and forth and then you don't have to like pick up your knife. You just, boom, speed racer. But I don't pay attention enough when I'm cooking to do that so and then you just have these awesome carrots for your cauliflower fried rice okay next up the tofu has been pressing in the back spoke about that earlier in the video so it's dried out a bit i um, have a whole video about doing tofu on the youtube channel but basically let's just talk real quick i do three sheets do, 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 do three sheets then I put them back together obviously you wouldn't be taking these apart okay put them back together and then I do slices this way and I do let's see I think about six so they look like little Frenchy fries okay then I will slice the other way so they become little cubes okay absolutely perfect Then I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid aminos with this, put it on a baking sheet or in the air fryer, and I will air fry it for 15 minutes or I'll baking sheet 350 or 400 for about 20 minutes, all right? Okay, so let's talk about this cauliflower fried rice that I've been talking about like half my video, I feel like. So I take this pre-riced, cauliflower which you can buy ahead of cauliflower and rice it yourself but you guys make seriously the biggest mess ever ignore my coolness with my selfie stick right now um and then i put garlic diced garlic and onions mushrooms and carrots inside this pan i'm stir frying it then i will add my rice cauliflower at the end because it doesn't take as much time to cook as the rest of this stuff because that stuff's like rooty heavy vegetables then Seriously, my kitchen's a mess. Like, look at all the food prep stuff happening. Then I'll add liquid aminos. This is like a soy sauce substitute, but it doesn't, um, it's gluten-free, so soy sauce oftentimes will have gluten in it, so just be aware of that if you have any gluten um, sensitivities. And then this is what my fried rice, cauliflower fried rice, comes out looking like. Delicious. I'm gonna add edamame and tofu and all kinds of different, uh, maybe like some roasted garbanzo beans. To that mixture at nighttime, maybe with a little bit of sriracha, um, for my dinner meal. So that's one of our options. I'm gonna keep trucking on the second batch of it and talk to you soon. Okay, let's talk squash. Okay, I have some green squash, some yellow squash, a bag of squash from Costco. Um, squash, I feel like, is one of the most um, like versatile vegetables because you can seriously do so many different things to it you can roast it you can saute it you can steam it like really any cooking method with squash it seems like i am going to zoodle it so this is a zoodle a zoodler i have a link to it if you want and you basically just put the squash in the zoodler and then you just turn this little knob and you can see it come out on the end there as like zucchini noodles so if i am cooking these to eat later like not for the meal like right now 
I will, um, I won't cook them all the way. Like I'll leave them a little bit like raw almost because when they microwave it, like you don't want them to be overdone. So leave them just a little bit crispy when you cook them initially, if you're going to be eating them, um, later. So that's kind of my zoodly tip. I like to put this with like a little bit of marinara sauce. You could do it with some, um, meat sauce if you are a carnivore. Um, I like to eat them with just a little bit of garlic. Okay, here is like the leftover that comes out of the machine. I don't waste this, you guys. I will just dice this up and add it to my cauliflower rice stir fry that I'm making as well. So, um, waste not, want not, people. <laughs> um, let's get trucking, I'll show you the next thing. Okay, I put some of my tofu baking in the oven and some of my tofu in the air fryer. This is air fried tofu that's been in there for about 15 minutes at 400. You guys look how crispy and awesome it is. Um, it's delicious. So this is my preferred method. My preferred method for cooking tofu um, because it's so consistent crispy and amazing and it only takes like 15 minutes it is smaller batches than putting it in the oven obviously because you don't have as much space but um, this tofu has just been sitting in a little bit of liquid aminos sometimes I'll put some spicy sesame oil um, in it because it'll give it like a little bit of kick my husband likes it that way put this in the air fryer for 15 minutes on 400 it's gonna be just as crispy just as delicious hey guys one thing I want to talk to you about is our plates um, the guide says that we should be using plates that are seven to eight inches um, across. My plates are square, and to be honest with you, I have no idea what they measure, so <laughs> busted out my tape measure. Now, you'll notice that my plates have this little divot in them. Do you guys kind of see like that rimmed edge? Going across is eight inches, so that would be considered a plate that's a good size, but that'd be going all the way through. Now, if I just go to the, ri the ridge, then I'm looking at five and a half inches. On my larger plate, the small base of it, not with the ridge, is six and a half, and the whole thing is 10. So just something to keep in mind when you're looking at your plates, make sure to check if they're seven to nine inches and um, really what you should be using. A bowl is not gonna be our best bet when plating because the depth can be deceiving. So really try and use a plate when you are putting your plate out if you're eating from home. All right, thanks.